I want to end by shifting for a moment to parents and why variability times context equals outcome, why that equation I believe gives you more control as well, more control than you could imagine, okay? And I actually, I, I'm going to apologize. I, I've never been able to tell these stories without choking up and I, 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 wish, I wish that weren't true because you kind of feel like embarrassed so I'll try. But if you know, as parents of kids that struggle, how hard it is to champion their cause, how just draining it is to fight the world. And it's like the rare instances where you find groups like this that actually understand and are supportive, it's just so such a breath of fresh air, but it's an exception, right? And the thing is, Knowing that, that, that variability is never just the answer, knowing how your kid's variability interacts with your kid's context means there aren't experts on your kid. You're the expert on your kid. There are so many people that are gonna try to tell you about how to raise your kid, and they're experts at half the equation, they, if that. <laughs> They may know the variability, but they don't know how it's interacting with these specific contexts. And the thing is, is knowing that equation will allow you to maintain your own judgment. Because you, you, have you ever been in that situation where you know you're making a decision for your kid and you can't explain it? You have that gut feeling that this is the right thing to do, and then everyone seems to be telling you that you're doing something wrong. I want to give you an example of how sometimes the best decisions that are made are really counterproductive, or like counterintuitive rather, sorry. <laughs> when I was in seventh grade, seventh grade was probably the worst year of my life. It was like things had kind of fallen apart, really, things had like <laughs> really fallen apart. Uh, and I had, my mom was championing me all the time and she was realistic though. Sometimes I did deserve to be punished. Uh, sometimes I was just kind of being a jerk. But a lot of times that wasn't the case. And one time where it was the case, uh, I was in a particularly boring art class. I have to say, by the way, he just lectured on art. We never got to do anything. Okay, but uh, I don't wanna make excuses because uh, you know the whole equation thing. Um, and my buddy is sitting next to me in the art class and he, he says, look what I got. And he opens up, and he's got these stink bombs. <laughs> They're a little glass vial of, it's just like sulfur. It smells like rotten eggs, OK? And he says, I dare you to throw it at the chalkboard. Now, my interesting variability, um, I blame this kid sitting next to me who gave them to me because what he didn't tell me was that you're supposed to throw one. He gave me seven of them. Oh, no. Threw it at the chalkboard, evacuated the classroom, and it wasn't hard to figure out who had thrown it because I was the only one laughing, like, outside. <laughs> but the thing is, is that my mom had to come get me and I was suspended from school, and she was rightly, like, at her wit's end, right? Because even she can't defend that. <laughs> that's not someone being mean to me. That's me just being a jerk in my class. And uh, although the good news is I didn't have to go to art class being suspended, so there was. Um, but so we get home, and my mom's really, really frustrated. She doesn't know what to do anymore. And I get sent to my room, and nobody's talking to me anymore. And. You know, my mom had always been and has always been sort of that champion. But I, <laughs> there was a moment where I actually believed I'd done something that even she wasn't going to be there for me anymore, right? And I have, when, when you know, we have a, tr a tradition in my family of getting married really young and having kids. So the good news is my grandma is, was, was pretty young. And we lived with my grandma when I was a little kid. And she's always been like a second mom to me. And when, 
<laughs> so I'm sitting in my room and I'm really thinking this is like something's really gone wrong. And there's a knock on my door. And my, it's my grandma. And she's got a present. <laughs> And I don't know why this was true, but it was at the time when spandex shorts were in style. <laughs> like straight up spandex shorts. Nothing over them, you just wore the spandex shorts. And I wanted a pair, but we didn't really have the money to get them. I needed a sheet. But she came in and sat down next to me. And I remember like it was yesterday. A little white box from a store called ZCMI with a silver bow. And she sat down and she said, it's not because I'm proud of what you did. It's because I love you. And yes, yeah, even today it's like too much. But the thing is, is you know how much crap we took for that decision? You know how many people, so-called experts, said, what are you doing? You're rewarding bad behavior. But there was so much going on in my life at that time, like terrible stuff, bullying and like just awful stuff that my world was collapsing around me, and my grandma knew what I needed. And my mom had made similar, you know, she couldn't be that person right then. Because, you know, she has to be a parent, too. And had my mom and my grandma not figured out for themselves this idea of variability times your context equals the outcome, they would have made different choices. And you want to just spend a moment talking to my mom and ask her how many people told her how terrible of a parent she was for making these decisions that in retrospect turn out to be phenomenally good parenting. Because these, these idiots, for lack of a better word, they at best they're, they're expert at half the equation. That's it. They cannot be an expert at the whole equation. Only you can. So I think that kids that struggle, I believe that it's small moments in their life that make huge differences. And my life is a little collection of these really, really small moments where people that were close to me, my mom, grandma, made the right choice. And just my little soapbox moment, and I apologize, it's really frustrating to me the way we treat moms. And you know this. I, I wish it was different. I wish, I wish dads played a bigger role, and hopefully maybe everyone here that's true. But, you know, I think... Moms know their kid. They're the ones in the trenches fighting really hard. And how do we treat them? We don't treat them like the expert that they should be when you look at this equation. Everybody and their dogs gives them unsolicited advice about how to parent that kid. And again, if this is right, if you believe what I'm saying, those people are not experts. You can listen, and you should. You should seek advice, of course. But Trust your judgment. I believe the single worst thing you can do for your kid is to abandon your own judgment about that. Now that means realistic, be realistic. You know, my mom, my mom did not just defend me at everything. There were things that I had to be punished for that were clearly my fault. But don't give up your judgment. Your kid needs you and you're the expert and if, if this is right, okay? And you know, the I mean, I'm hoping that moms don't have that experience here. That'd be wonderful. That would be a nice change in the trend, okay? But I'm guessing that's not the case, okay? So when someone wants to give you advice, just remind them, thank you. I appreciate your expertise at half the equation. I'll take that under advice. And you know, it's funny because one of my, my dear colleagues, uh, Kathy Ellison, who's actually, um, we're working together on a book about my life a little bit that goes into the details of it. But her current book, Buzz, is like, it reads like a, here's, here's the kind of experts that have the equation that everyone wants to tell you what the answer is for your kid, you know? And it's, it's, it's frustrating me. Okay, so that's my soapbox moment. I apologize. But I want to just, okay, so I'm going to conclude so we're all sudden, for, except for me because someone gave me some blocks. So um, that's it, okay? That's, that is the equation that as a scientist, that I am so happy to be a part of this learning revolution. That equation is allowing us to design new learning environments that will blow your mind. And a lot of them are free. And we are dead serious about this. Learning is going to be different very soon, I promise you, okay? 
and it comes from that. But it just so happens that that equation is also your best friend in terms of your ability to start taking honest control of your life. And it's just in, there's, that means there's bad news and good news, right? The bad news is there aren't easy answers. They're not easy answers. There are birds flying over, but they're not easy answers. <laughs> There are experts that can tell you what to do. There isn't a magic pill. There isn't a magic program. Okay? The good news is you've got way more control than you could possibly imagine. It just may not be how you imagined it. Okay? So thank you very much.